What's up guys? So I tried to uh, start doing the software tune on the Audi last night and the computer or the ECU is in uh, the, it's locked by the immobilizer. So I'm going to have to make a uh, bench boot cable so that I can get the ECU in boot mode. Uh, I'll go over how I'm making the the bench test cable and how to get it in boot mode and how to force the ECU uh, rewrite. But um, I'm going to log on to the computer while it's still in the car and show you what is happening with the software to indicate that it's locked by the immobilizer. And then I'll show you how to make the connector, how to buy, how to get it in boot mode, how to force the, the ROM right, and then throw it back in the car and, and start it up. So... Hopefully we'll have it running today. All right guys, so I'm building, I'm gonna, I'm in the process of building my own jumper harness to put the ECU in boot mode and to bench flash the ECU because of the immobilizer. So what I did was I cut the old diagnostic connector out of the A6, and then this is the leftover ECU connector from when I did the wiring conversion on the two cars. And you only need a few wires. I'm still missing one more wire that has to go into this, but that's really all you need for the ECU side. You got two grounds, and then you've got a power wire going into that middle connection right there. Then you have your K-line, which has to hook up to the diagnostic connect, uh, port, this because that's how you're going to communicate with the computer and then these two other pins get power along with that third pin that's missing and then you'll have power and ground going to this and the k line and that should be all you need and then you can uh but you'll still have to ground a pin inside the ecu and i'll show you how to do that all right guys so here's my harness finished up not the prettiest thing, but it'll work. Uh, so the only other two wires that I have sticking out are the uh, power and ground. And then this, it's got an extra lead coming off of the ground so that I can touch it to the number 24 pin inside the ECU. But I'm gonna, now I'm gonna show you what I experienced last night when I was trying to flash it. Uh, and then, uh, I'll pull the ECU and bench flash it and record that. All right, guys. So the cable that I'm using to program this ECU is an original Ross Tech um, K2 USB. I've had this cable for, shoot, 10 years. So I don't know if the newer cables will work with this, but you can get a cable off of eBay. It doesn't have to be a K2 USB because uh, you're going to have a hard time finding one of these. Uh, this one will still scan unlimited VINs, but it'll only scan older uh, generation Audis. It won't scan any of the new generation Audis. So uh, once it hits a certain year, it basically becomes... All right, so it's kind of hard to see because of the sun. But hopefully you'll be able to see. I'm using Nefmoto VW. And I also have to set up the cable in the VCDS. So I'm going to go in here and show you the settings on VCDS. So what you do is you go into your options and then you make sure that it's whatever your cable set to COM1, COM2, uh, USB, COM3, COM4, whatever. Um, but make sure that boot in, in intelligent mode is turned off and then you need to select KWP2000 and then hit apply and it'll tell you it can't work without testing it. So then you'll have to go up here to hit test. And once it says the test is, is completed and satisfactory, then you can hit save. Once that's done, then you can open the Nefmoto software. And now I'm gonna turn the car on. And I've got the door open because it's so freaking hot in here, so uh just bear with me all right so now the first thing you need to do is click right here where it says kwp 2000 flashing 
And then you go up here to baud rate. Set your baud rate at 38,400. Make sure that you've got the correct layout selected. I've already got the layout selected for my ECU. So we're gonna do connect slow INT. And you can see that it's connecting to it. And now it says that it's connected. So now this is where I have the issue because of the immobilizer. And you can see in my dash, it says safe right now. So, but we'll hit uh, read full, full read flash. And then as long as you're able to do all that and you're cool with it, click OK. So now here you see immobilizer not authenticated. And then it says that it unable to properly start diagnostic session. And it, it won't let it go because of the uh, immobilizer. So I, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to put the ECU in boot mode and then just force flash the new uh, data onto the drive. And I just wanted to point out, I know everybody has a freaking hard time with this bolt, but that's how you get it out. You take the windshield wiper arm off, stick the freaking torque wrench down through the hole where the wiper arm goes. And I can't get the camera to focus on it, but the, the head of it's right there. But, I mean, it's a straight shot as long as you take the windshield wiper arm off. All right, guys, so this is a little tricky. I've only done this one time before because I've only had one other ECU that was uh, uh, stuck by the immobilizer. All right, guys, so this is the setup that I have in order to do uh, the ECU rewrite over top of the immobilizer. So this will get rid of the immobilizer and it will allow me to get rid of the automatic tune that's on this and put the M box that's the factory tune for an S4 uh, with a manual transmission. So what I did was I have my ground wire hooked up, my positive wire hooked up. I've got my jumper cable built uh, that I showed earlier in the video. And basically what I have is I have this loose negative and you have to touch it to that uh, ROM chip, not the very last pin to the left on this side, but the next one up. So the second to last pin on this side, you touch it with this ground when you before you turn the power on. So I have a switch right here to turn the power on and off. So I hold that ground on to pin 24, switch, the, turn the power on, and hold it on that ground for 10 seconds, and then remove it, and then it's in boot mode. Now, you have to run the Galetto 1260 software on a 32-bit computer system. It will not work on a 64-bit. I've been fighting with it on my laptop, because my laptop's Windows 10 64-bit, and it will not work on there. So, I brought it in and you hooked it up to my old PC that I had sitting here in, in the house, and uh, it's an old XP uh, computer. So now that I have it in boot mode, all I'm going to do is I'm going to open the Galetto software, and now I have it selected for boot mode in the 29F800BB, and then selected an A6 all road 2.7 uh, by turbo. And then you just click ECU data. So it's going to data reading. It's going to tell you about doing pin 24. And it's starting to read the data. See, and it'll show you ECU number not found, ECU number not found. We need to read the ECU. And I always do a factory backup. So I'm going to do A6 manual and it's going to start reading the data out of the out of the uh ecu so it'll it'll down and you'll see the progress bar down here so a after it gets done with that it'll say read okay and it'll give you some other data down in here then what we're going to do is we're going to open an, our burn file 
and then download it into the ECU. So I'll, I'll come back to this after the progress bar is done. All right, guys, we're almost wrapped up. It's at 96, 97%. So now you get end of read, tells you to close the dashboard. All right, now that you've done the end of read, and it says start reading, and then it says okay. Now we can open the file. I'm going to do my 551 Hitachi, and then I'm going to download the file. And it's going to tell you to put it, make sure you put it back in boot mode again. And now it's going to go through. It says seed, seed key to OK. And then it's erasing the ECU. And then it'll come up and say uh, writing. Start writing. So now it's writing the file. So I'll pick back up after it's done writing the file. All right, just about finished uploading the software. So and then it tells you to wait for 10 seconds. All right, now we're done. Okay, so now that the software is loaded, now I'm going to turn off the ECU disconnect the galetto cable hook up my ross tech cable and make sure that the ecu is reading correctly okay guys so now i have my vcds pulled up i'm going to connect to the engine and just make sure that it connects with the uh ecu all right everything's checking out it's reading as a 2.7 liter we'll check fault codes it should have numerous fault codes uh because nothing's hooked up except for power so all right we've got fault codes we've got communication with the ecu so now i'm going to go plug it into the car and see if it'll start the car all right guys so the ecu flash worked flawlessly uh if you follow those uh directions that i gave uh that'll work on any me 7.1 or 7.1.1 um, but you'll have to use the Galetto software, the Nefmodo software that I was using originally that you saw in this video where it showed that the immobilizer was locking it, uh, does not support boot mode. So you have to use a Galetto 1260 and the Galetto cable, uh, so that you can actually access boot mode. Uh, that's the only way that I know how to get past the immobilizer other than doing a command prompt, but you still have to have the Galetto uh, software or the Galetto cable in order to connect to the ECU in boot mode. So uh, the ECU being in boot mode is basically useless unless you have the right cable. The Ross Tech cable that I was using for regular diagnosis, for doing the VCDS, for burning the software with the Nefmodo uh, software, it, it does not work in boot mode. So I can use the Ross Tech cable for a lot of things, but boot mode is not one of them. So uh, just keep that in mind if, if this is something that you're going to do and you're going to try and, and crack your own ECU and get rid of the immobilizer or uh, if you're having immobilizer problems and you're trying to fix it, the only way to get into boot mode on one of these is with a Galetto cable. There's other ways to do it, but the only way that I've ever done it was with a Galetto cable. Um, and it's really easy. I got the, the Galetto software and the cable uh, shipped. I, got, I received it in two days and... Uh, I ordered it off of eBay and I think I, I paid 28 bucks or $32. It was some, somewhere around there. It was like 30, right around $30. And, uh, it's well worth it. If you're going to do a bunch of ECUs, I mean, if you're, if this is the only one that you're ever going to do, I don't think it's worth it in my own personal opinion. But if you're locked and you don't have anybody that's able to, to bypass the immobilizer for less than 30 bucks, then yeah, it's worth it. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, takes about 30 minutes of your day to do it, but you can completely bypass the immobilizer, load whatever flash you want onto the ECU and carry on about your business. But I really hope that this video helps anybody in a similar situation. And I hope you guys check out the next video. If you like what you saw in this video, please like, comment, subscribe, share this video, let your friends know what I'm doing. And uh, I see big things happening for this channel here in the future. So hope y'all enjoy uh, what you see and hope you'll continue to come along with me for the ride. 
Have a great one.